So I was going to try and get the pen working this session as being the last major component, but I think on the whole that getting the screen contrast fixed is higher priority. If you can't see what's happening on the screen, there's no point even trying. So as you can tell by this rather grainy thumbnail, I have taken the back off the machine and hooked up the logic analyzer to the various LCD control pins. I have managed to trace them to a chip on the LCD board that is underneath this, but I haven't been able to figure out what, what chip it is yet and therefore what the data sheet is. So until then, I don't know the command set. So rather than try to figure it out from uh, decompiling the, uh, where did I put it? Here we go decompiling the Parmos ROM. What I'm going to try instead is running the Parmos ROM and changing the contrast setting and seeing what happens with the uh, controller chip. So we should be able to snoop on the conversation between Parmos and the controller. So this is hopefully what it's doing. It is running Parmos right now if I peer under here, um, it appears not to be running Parmos. Let's hit the preset button. Oh yeah, uh, for some reason it won't reset if the logic analyzer is plugged in. So let's try that. Here we go. And now we have the Palm logo on the screen. So if I plug that in and hit the run button, we see that nothing is happening because pretty obviously it's not talking to the device. However, if I find the contrast buttons. Okay, sorry about that. That turned out to be more complicated than I thought and I managed to avoid recording it for some reason. So it turns out that if you plug the logic analyzer in, and then I try to adjust the contrast, which I shall do. The screen turns off. However, uh, I suspect what's happening is there are pull-up or pull-down resistors which are less strong than the ones in the logic analyzer. So the logic analyzer is disturbing the voltage signals and everything is going haywire. Now, we do, however, get a set of commands. This should be it changing the contrast. And we see a pulse train. We've got our start and stop control bits and our clock bits. But what we don't see is any variation in the signal. Like this is always the same. So I wonder if uh, this is because I have wired up one of the pins incorrectly, or it's just not being picked up. So that's peculiar. So I'm going to pause it and take this thing back to the workbench and double check the wiring, I think. But of course, uh, if it's wired up correctly, then the logic analyzer is pulling the, the data signal low, which means that or well, to be honest, high, which means that uh, nothing will show up here and zeros or logic ones or whatever are showing up on the controller device and that's why the screen's being turned off. So I can't actually analyze this using this logic analyzer. That's fabulous. Uh, Yeah, whoopee. 
Okay, so we can't control the screen, but if I were to hook up the analyzer again, throw the switch so that it boots into bootstrap mode, and uh, and then run my code, we should be able to compare what we're getting to see whether I'm actually doing this properly. Okay, so if I get ready to execute, I hit the run button, I press return. Stop. We get a signal and what do we see? So this is pretty much the same pattern. There's a mu I've got I'm sending two bytes next to each other with a very short delay that's possibly wrong. We do see in the init code this is the init byte. It should be sending hex seven zero and this is the actual contrast byte. Uh, we should be able to see this happening. Here. However, there should be a pause between the two. So if I go over to here, adjust the position of the windows. So in display in it, here it's doing the thing, here it's writing out the 70 byte. Here we send the termination bit and then there's a couple of delay traps. This one is 4E20 uh, which is 20,000, 20, 20 milliseconds. So that's worth doing. However, I would still like to see the data bytes being produced. I think I'm not going to get anything with the logic analyzer. So I'm going to have to go offline and hook this up to my actual scope, which should hopefully do a better job of capturing the signals. Unfortunately, I can't do that live, so I'll just have to take screenshots instead. So be back then. Well, I did manage to get a oscilloscope trace, which you should be able to see on the screen now. And this is exactly what I would expect from Palmos sending a 70 hex byte. Uh, all the clock and data signals are exactly the way I expect. The signals are active, high, etc, etc. So I think I'm doing the right thing here. Uh, however, while I was getting this capture, the machine stopped booting into Parmos. It just resets continually. So I think some of its internal storage that does have a battery here is now corrupt. So I'll just try executing with that delay in and see what comes out. So luckily, Mutos still runs on it. And it is indeed still the very dark screen. So, um, I am very puzzled. It's a shame I didn't get a trace of Parmos changing the um, contrast itself. You can see that the pins I soldered on have in fact come off because everything is just far too small. 
and having to work on the thing while it's upside down isn't great for pressing keys. The other thing I could do is to solder some actual wires on and route them out through the quote debug port unquote. I do also have a built-in command for adjusting the contrast. It just sends a byte to this. So let's see if I can get the thing the right way up, shall I? Well, I tried sending various bytes and nothing's happened. So I, I'm wondering, have I... I know I've double-checked this lots and lots of times, but have I actually... Am I actually not sending the byte correctly? Well, now we know what a decent signal is supposed to look like. These off gaps might be a bit short. This is their code, and I am copying it almost exactly. Anyway... So... Set data to zero. Command to one. Wait. So of the three bits, we've got four row in PF data, uh, which is the data. Uh, we've got 4.0 in PK data, which I believe to be the command bit, this one. And... No, sorry, that's the clock bit. That's D2 in this trace. This is command. Which is here. Command to zero, clock to zero. Right, we are here. We now do the data itself. We set the bit well, we set or clear the bit. Then we Then we clock, shift right by one and go again. Okay, now what's this code doing? Uh, PF data that is 1011, that is unsetting, that's doing this. That's doing this. Then we do lots of this. Then we undo that bit. Then we undo that bit. Okay, that is the same code. All right, D1 becomes our... Oh, for heaven's sake! Oh! Rah. Okay, I know what's going on. This and is backwards. So, uh, this is... I'm used to instruction sets where the destination is the first register, but on this, the destination is the last register. So what this is doing is anding the two together, and instead of sticking the result in D1 where it will be ignored, 
it puts it in D0, which is our data, and it all goes pear-shaped. Okay, let's get rid of that. It means we discard all bits but the first. That's why we can turn it on or off, but no more than that. Okay, here it goes. In fact, I had made an additional mistake there in that just changing this to an AND was, uh, with the destination D1 was in fact clobbering the bit number as well. So uh, I just changed this to be a B test and a bit index and a sub Q and a BG. And it all works fine and we can change the contrast to our heart's content and it appears that 100 is a decent value. And with luck, this is showing up on the screen in a reasonable fashion. <sighs> Who knows? Okay, so I'll just check this in. Uh, we do at least now know what the various, uh, I will just make sure that comment is up to date. Uh, clock is four zero PK data. So PK four zero LC contrast clock. This is start stop bit. This is data bit. Okay. So I am wondering whether to call this short now. Oh yes, we. this is our new contrast code which got hacked into the CLI which we don't want to keep there. Uh, and so I think we want to check in BIOS only So I think, well, we could get started on the pen, but uh, that is going to be a little bit complex. Turns out the pen is also connected to the second SPI device. And not only that, but the battery controller is connected to the second SPI device. And I found quite a lot of code referring to SPI cont 2 in here. Uh, they all use different chip select and different settings. So uh, this is the scan. This is the code that talks to the keyboard. Uh, can we get back to here? Kidra has a few UI bugs. So this is the code that talks to the battery controller. And uh, I'm a little bit confused by it because it does not appear to be setting the chip select before it sends the data. Instead, it, uh, well, I assume that this line here is doing, is adjusting the chip select. And this happens after it triggers the um, the read-write transaction. But this does definitely look like a chip select, so you can see it turning it back off here by raising it. Anyway, uh, that is a value for PG data. Have I put that in? Yes, I have. Uh, the Pen uh, where did I put it? Also what's interesting is that it all seems to be copies of the same code. Don't think that's it. I did find the pen code. This is the keyboard controller code. Uh, the pen device is hooked up by its own, uh, let me start that again, 
The pen touchscreen controller is con is also connected to our SPI. I did find the uh, chip and the data sheet, which is a big improvement. So it could be this. I don't know what BB get XY is. But this is very similar code to the uh, keyboard controller. Let me just recommit A249. Nop. Okay. So this is calling this code. Yeah, this is almost identical to the uh, the battery controller code. So in fact, we can look at this and see FB of PG data is also that same bit. Maybe this is not the pen controller. What's this function called? Here we go, pen get raw pen. So I think this is the one we want. You can see there is an awful lot of this. So what's I wrong about that thing being the battery. Where's this called from? So this is called from talk to battery controller, which I thought was doing battery controller things. This is being called from hardware wake and proof filtered burr brown read. This is doing, yeah, this is called from lots of battery related things. So you can see that this is clearing 1011. That is clearing the bit with value 4, that's bit 2. Here it is setting it. This is doing a send and receive to the device. But it's also f twiddling this thing in pin on port E. Uh, see, I thought this was the battery. So get raw pen here is calling proof BB get XY, which twiddles port F. And it calls this, yes, and this touches port G. So I think, now I come to um, think of it, that this is not to do with the battery or the pen. This is something else related to talking to the 
Uh, hang on, I put that in the... No, that's port G. Yeah, I think I've been... I think I've been writing these things in the wrong place. So I think this has got something to do with the uh, the SPI interface to both the pen and the battery chips. This is probably rooted to both things, which means that the pen chip select is most likely this. So that's port F, so this could be pen chip select. So now if I go to talk to battery, battery, The battery send receive is, yeah, so let's call this battery and pen send receive. You see this is called from there, however if you go find something that's definitely the battery, prove battery command alkaline detect read, that calls this thing. It's called get raw pen. Well, maybe the ba maybe the battery code is talking to the touchscreen. I don't know why it would want to, but what's this? That is yet another copy of Elmo. What's this that's next to it? Uh, does generic stuff with the battery. So Hardware charger on just sets a clears a bit even, and so that is yeah wrong one. Convert unsigned hex BF one o one one. That is bit six of J. Low charger enable. It turns the charger off. Right, this should be talking to the battery controller. I mean, I don't think there's any other way it can do it. What's this? This. Doesn't have a name. Where does this come from? Is this actually a child subroutine of? Yes, it is. This is not a function. I put this in the wrong place. I should be able to keep pressing delete. Can I delete this? Yeah, there we go. So down here, there should be the end of the function. I remember going through this previously. It's gigantic. The 
is here. Okay, and it's not decompiling because A0, A5, not Nine, nop. So you see, this is calling a generic function that's doing something to either the pen or the battery. These system calls are annoying because Ghidra doesn't know how to turn them into uh, branches or well, subroutine calls. So it ruins the ability to generate decent code. As far as Ghidra is concerned, it just pushes some stuff onto the stack does a trap with no parameters and then pops stuff back off the stack again. So it just tends to just kind of vanish in the decompiled version. Okay, hardware battery master read. All of this. So what port is it touching? Well, this pin seems interesting. Uh, D is 1101, so that's This one. Hardware charge off. Yeah, that just sets that bit. This is doing something with port D looking at bit 7 of port D. Uh, see, this is not initialized as a GPIO, so it's an interrupt line. So I don't know what reading data here does. Uh, understanding the battery charger is not actually the priority here. What I want to do is to try and figure out which is the chip select line for the battery so that I can identify what the chip select line is for the pen. Then we should be able to just talk to the pen controller. So this is just definitely talking to the pen. Like, this is not my name. This name came from the... Where did that name come from? Is that in the wrong place? Uh...
Do I have two of these in me? Yes, I do. So this is the one at 9A, and this is the other one. So this... is not the one I want. This is the pen code. Right. So what's this doing? It's IPR Interrupt pending register. This, why is this checking for a pen? Uh, checking for an interrupt. So it's checking for this bit RTC. Yeah. Real-time clock. Level 4 interrupt event from the real-time clock is pending. I, why is the pen code touching that? Exit if there is no real-time clock bit pending. That makes no sense. Well, this is not touching any bits, any ports other than IPR that I can see. So it's going straight into here. This is setting what I think to be the pen chip select. And then it's calling this. That is reading and writing the pen. And this takes a single parameter on the stack, if I remember correctly. Here, you see it's pushing a word onto the stack. Um, So this is turning interrupts off. Uh, this is calling this to do the work. Right, this is again a separate copy of the thing I've already been through for the um, for the battery. Uh, this looks like it's generated by a completely different compiler. The code style is quite different. We don't have the symbol names after each subroutine. So what it's doing is it's putting uh, the addresses of the SPI2 device into A0 and A1. So this is uh, byte star. So register in a zero byte star let's be our data two and 
and I believe it's inlined it in this code here. This is a byte star. This is a byte star. No, it's not. These are word stars. So here you can see it doing stuff to the pen. Uh, we set up the SPI for a transaction. We clear this bit, whatever it does. We wait for the transaction to complete, apparently twice. Oh, yes, there's a third parameter. This one, which is on the stack. And this is stack plus OXE word, so it's always two bytes long. So wait for bit seven, waits for the transaction to complete. Then it uh, right, that's not wait for bit seven, this is wait for bit seven. And this is a word star. This is a... So what this is doing... If this bit is set... Rather, if it's not set... send it out and wait for a transaction to complete. Otherwise, do more complicated things. That's a delay. Yeah, that's complex. And I don't really follow what's going on, but it's not called wait for bit seven. Uh, this is do pen thing. So the do pen thing is calling wait for bit seven read write pen is this is a maze of code but you can see that this is not doing any chip select stuff but this is here so I think that the basics of it is this is the pen chip select then it uses the SPI interface to talk to the pen then it uh, undoes the SPI interface so I think that's basically all we need to talk to it now what we don't have
is any information about how this chip works. I mean, we've got the data sheet, but it's complicated to say the least. So uh, actually getting anything out of it is going to be exciting. So as far as I can tell, you send it a command byte Uh, multiplexer input. You send it a command byte and then you read back a number of bits saying, uh, t t telling it which, telling it the value of the channel you asked for. And I assume that there are multiple channels per, for X and Y. I know it can run in more than one mode. And I don't know how this is hooked together. Wow. Okay. So we've got read write pen here, which I believe takes a single parameter, which is probably the opcode to send to the device. So that's being pushed onto the stack, therefore this parameter is going to be at 4, param1, yeah. So let's call this opcode. Uh, However, yes, this is the extra parameter. I don't think this parameter is set up correctly. Yeah, E is wrong. They should start at four. This is uh, this is due to a compiler having abstracted something out. So wait for a well, do pen thing here is referring to values in its caller's stack frame, which is not complicated at all. So, okay, so if we tell this that there's a dummy value, let's go here, it's a D word. And it's a stack four. Oops. So this is a dummy value at eight, uh, nine, a, b, c. D E doesn't make any sense. C D okay, there's the does need to be another one. So this is going to be at C. 
size of two. C, D, and the next one is an E. So this code, bah, that's not working at all. Okay, anyway, uh, this value here, I believe to be the, yeah, what is that doing? That's a word at address at offset four. And it is being referred to. Okay, I can't actually tell what's happening there. I think the thing to do is to try poking the um, pen controller and seeing what happens. Now, this is more fraught than you might think because, of course, we've got this code in the for doing the keyboard stuff, which is called st send receive from an interrupt handler. So we're going to have to make sure the interrupt are turned off around our uh, talking to the pen, to the touchscreen controller, in order to make sure that the interrupt doesn't come along and reprogram SPI2 while we're working on it. So... Now this is done by reading SR and then putting the value back again and I'm sure that the BIOS has got code for doing this. So that's word, all SR, set SR, anyway, 2700. So this is going to send uh, and receive a byte. However, it's still set up to send it to the ST microcontroller. So we think that our pen chip select is on F1.
So let's follow up the stack chain. Do pen thing is called from read write pen. I'm going to want to come back here. BBXY. Here we. Okay, so. Uh, this is PFP Ewan is the pull up register. Or the pull down register. Uh, that is signed hex F. D1101, that's pin 2, this one here, it is clearing it, so it disables the pull-up resistor. Raises the chip select line, assuming it is a chip select line. Okay, and now we go into here. The appropriate configuration for the pet the pen device is two two four seven. And we also want to do this thing with PG. Now let's take a look at that touchscreen controller. See what things might be wired up to. Where's the pinout? Here. So serial data Input if the chip select is low. But we've raised this, whatever it is. Oh, wait a minute, this hasn't set the data. This has just set the select line. Oring it turns it into a GPIO. is that bit nothing particularly interesting wait a minute IRQ5 that's a pen interrupt that's what that is so what this is doing is by setting this to a GPIO, because of course this thing we think of as the here is here, we stop it being an interrupt and therefore we know that no pen interrupts can be showing up. This means that uh, if the 
pen controller tries to get our attention by asserting pin 11, pen IRQ, while we're talking to the, uh, the, the controller, then bad things don't happen. But we still don't have chip select, unless it's this. This is the only thing I can think of for it to be. Okay, well, let's stash this in here because we're not going to care about interrupts just yet. So in our pen send receive, wait, PE, oh, that's the, let's look at this one. So I think that this is the one we particularly care about. So, B is 1011. And that's on port G, so 1011 pen and battery, maybe. Gene data and equals not pen chip select should lower this uh, pin chip select on the um, touchscreen controller and we can now send it commands right now the bottom bit the bottom nibble of the uh, SPI cont 2 is the number of bits to transfer minus 1. So clearly this is an 8-bit command and this is a 7-bit command. So if we look at this, our commands are, well this says 8 bits wide and they always start with a set bit. And the response we get back is 8 to 12 bits, depending on whether we're in high or low resolution mode. So what is do pen thing being called with? Oh yeah, what does this mean? If command uh, one zero, well, that's this bit here. But then this code is actually doing all kinds of weird stuff with the com with the command byte. So it looks like if A0 here is not set, then we only send seven bits. It's kind of weird. Anyway, let's follow the stack 
chain up. So that we're sending two commands, which is 90 and D8. And this is passing in two parameters. Uh, I think read write pen takes a oh no no uh, read write pen returns a 8 bit value Okay, so nine zero is set not 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 one. No, it's not set not not one not 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 not. D eight is one one o one one o o o. The single-ended differential reference select bit is the one that depends on the hardware. And it looks like that's always zero. OK. So that's the wrong code, but we do want to say data equals SPI data two. So I believe we need to initialize these. PFP Ewan F four two A Okay, so that builds. So I think that we may have enough here to actually get something out of the pen controller. So let's just do this. You have the serial console enabled. So I have no idea what we're going to get out of this. Okay, so let's execute and nothing.
don't think that's actually told it to start sending and receiving, to be honest. So it's hung here. Read, write, pen. Do pen thing. Two two four seven. Uh, one zero. So that's six clock by eight. Not quite the slowest it can go. Two. One zero. So it's on, but not exchanging. Four. Uh, zero one zero zero. So interrupt request enabled. Um, that. I've been here before for the SD code. Right, that actually tells it to enable interrupts if four, seven, well, seven is the bit count. So four is zero, zero, one, zero, I-R-Q-E-N. I don't think that makes an awful lot of sense. I don't know why we would want, be wanting to generate SPI interrupts at this point. So that's actually not told it to do anything, but we have written a value to the FIFO, which is a zero. Right, so we then get to do pen thing, and this is where we actually tell it to do stuff. So in this case, it's a 2347. So 2 is the same data rate. 3 is enable and exchange. 4 is as here, and 7 is the bit count. So this will be... Two four seven two three four seven. Right, so my earlier worries about the the chip select line being inserted before a transfer happens are void because it was in fact not starting a transfer. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so run it. We get a lot of the same byte. Now, I did go look for Linux drivers for doing this and there is one and it's huge like really huge 1500 lines and it appears to use lots of stuff involving you know voltages and resistances so This could be tough, but we are still not talking to the uh, the chip. So what we receive is a appears to be a one zero. Although now we come to think of it, I think I'm doing this wrong again.
So we clock out our command, but the response hasn't come in yet. So, uh, so what's this doing? Two, two, four, zero, two, two is enable no exchange for, but the z bit count of zero is one bit. And I need to change the type of this. Ah, you can't use volatile here. Yeah. Right, because it, the decompilation is missed bits. Because it assumes if you write twice in succession to one of these pointers, then nothing happens. So... Um, this is this is an incorrect decompilation, I think. So that this writes a zero to the uh, to SPI data. It's right to zero to the transmit buffer. Then this doesn't do anything. But then we do this. This does a send and receive of a single bit. Then we fiddle with this bit which I thought was the battery and then we do a send and receive of 16 bits So I think what that's doing is trying to read all possible bits of the response, of which there could be up to 12. And then it says zero fills until you run out of clocks. And then for the result, SPI data to left shift by three bits. Okay, so let's change this code. So pen send and receive. We are sending a uh, a byte and we are reading back a word.
So let's try that. Do we need to wait? There's a wait here. It's an A249. It is waiting. A little. Uh, the actual amount being weighted appears to be coming from uh, this structure here, whatever it is. It's loading the value at this register into the register that used to contain SPI cont2. The decompilation has elided all of that because the value has been sent to a trap and it doesn't know how to decompile those. So let's put a delay thousand in. Um, Actually, it looks like it can happen more or less immediately. Ah, we have to wait for the busy bit to reset, but I don't know what the busy bit is. And it doesn't seem to be any code here for doing stuff with the busy bit. I don't see any loops. Okay, let's just try that. I'll try it like that then. Okay, and let's run it. Zero. Great. And also that needs to be a four. So either any data is in the top two bits or this isn't working. So this code does seem to be setting spacont2 to a different value. So maybe we need to do that. Also, that should be an F, not a zero. So two, two, four F. So that was actually trying to read one byte, uh, one bit. Blah. Okay, now what do we get? Well, it looks like a number. Oh, -hoo! That does indeed look like a number. There's my stylus. Okay, down here in the corner, it's falling off the yeah, that right down the bottom, it, it falls off the uh, the touch screen. So the number goes like that. Now, I expect there to be three channels for X, Y, and Z. So let's do... Well, nine zero is clearly channel X. So where did I put the chat screen data sheet? Uh, so zero zero zero. Uh, no, that zero zero one is X driver one. So the next one we want is uh, 
ทาวิลวิลที่อื่นคอมมานด์ที่ฉันเซตติ้งคือ d8 Here. So I'm going to guess that one is Y, but D8 is D is one one o one 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 o one. Yeah, okay. So that is the other. Um, the other channel. This one. I think this touch screen isn't is far is connected sideways. To be honest, so let's just do well, nine zero. Uh, the eight is for eight bit mode. So let's just go for. Let's use twelve bits throughout. Uh, and we will measure Z as well, so that's going to be F zero, like so. Okay, so let's see what this does. Right, numbers. So X is moving. Y, yep, you've got X and Y. Uh, Z appears to not be connected to anything. Um, I still don't know how to how to detect whether the pen is pressed or not, other than through the interrupt. It's possible that's all we need. That is, a pen interrupt shows up, and we uh, fetch the x and y and do the conversion and post the result to the input system. Um, so this is connected to. Oh, I gave it an invalid channel. So uh, Z is actually one o one o, which is A. And in fact, let's do the fourth one as well, just which is one 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 o or E. Okay, let's execute this. Right, numbers. Right, Z and Q are not doing anything. It would be nice if we could detect pen up, pen down from this. Mm, maybe we can. So if the uh, if the pen interrupt is configured to be a GPIO, then we can actually see the value. PF data is f 
42D, 429. Now, even if this works, there are still things to do, which is to convert the values we're getting into a nice x, y, uh, and send it to the Atari operating system. And this seems to happen via iKeyboard. So what we're actually going to be doing is pushing a sequence of bytes to keyboard vec here. Actually converting the touchscreen resistance voltage things into x, y is actually quite complicated and involves calibrating the screen. This is why resistive touchscreens always start up with, you know, touch these targets to calibrate the screen. So we may need to write a program to do that. We could use a Atari TOS development kit and actually produce a program which we run. However, I'd kind of like to bake it into the ROM so that you don't need to deploy more moving parts. Hmm. Anyway, let's execute this and see what we get. Right, BB. Presto. That works nicely. Right, we now have a successful interface to the touch screen. We do need to do all the front end of it, but I need to go figure out how to do that. So I am going to leave it here. The other thing we can do is hook it up to an interrupt line, which looks reasonably straightforward for this. It is IRQ5. Yeah, you can see that X has got the lowest value down on the right-hand side of the screen and the highest value up on the left. Well, Y does appear to be roughly the right way around. I don't really like that dead zone at the, at the bottom. And I also don't know the appropriate way to map these because I bet it ain't linear. Yes, good. Well, that was much less horrifying than I thought it was going to be. We may be spamming random bytes to the battery charger so that if we put a battery in it, it will explode. Now, uh, of course, this direction is only 160 pixels so that we don't need 12-bit resolution, which was why the, uh, the Palmos code was using a D8 here, because that sets the touchscreen controller to 8-bit resolution, which is faster. So we might as well do that as well. But I think we're going to leave that until next time. That is a decent piece of work. Uh, I think it is actually almost done, at least for the first stage. We just now need to hook up some UI things. Awesome. Okay then. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.